was at a family member's funeral the other day. I'll go ahead and pause here just to say thank you in advance for the condolences. You all are so wonderful. But my wife's grandmother was truly a special woman of 86 years and most definitely left a piece of our puzzle missing. For those of you who have listened to the episode on grief about a month ago, you'll understand. But the ceremony at her service was beautiful and was led by a close church friend of hers and was incredibly personal and touching. It was really just lovely. But one piece of it that stuck out to me in particular was a scripture from Psalm that was read at the ceremony. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The, the two words that really stick out here are overwhelmed and rock. So I'm going to say that one more time. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Full transparency, I've heard this a number of times, but that day I couldn't stop thinking about those words, or more deliberately, the word rock. In my circling around this word, I found myself paraphrasing it down to, in times of struggle, lead me to my rock. When I'm overwhelmed, or when I'm stressed, or when I'm scared of what is around the corner, even if I don't know what it is, what can I attach? What can I hold on to? Hearing that passage, uh, especially in a room full of mourners, many of them who were no doubt in time of struggle, it really struck me. And I started thinking, what is my rock? What or who do I turn to in times of struggle? In times of struggle, lead me to what? When you think of your rock in life, what comes to mind? What meaning does a rock hold for you? Some of you might think of a a rock tying you down. You're in the middle of the ocean and there's this heavy rock tied to your feet, but that's not the kind of rock I'm talking about right now, at least not in today's episode. So instead, let's do a little visualization together. You can close your eyes if you feel comfortable. Now, imagine this. You are in the middle of the worst hurricane the world has ever seen. Gusty winds are howling and they're blowing all around you. You can barely see because of the heavy rain pouring into your eyes. Trees are getting uprooted. People are screaming. You're, you're scared. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get swept away in this storm. I'm, I'm a goner. And you look around frantically, like desperate for anything, for something to hold on to. Something that will keep you safe, that will protect you from the storm until it passes. And then, a rock. It appears right in front of you. This big, sturdy boulder. It's unmovable, it's unshakable. And while everything else around you is becoming untethered, this rock seems firmly on the ground. Solid. It doesn't even shake doesn't budge. So, obviously, you hang on to it for dear life. You're tethered to it. It's unmoving, and it keeps you safely on the ground through the storm. The winds around you are howling, but you are no longer afraid, because you know that as long as you hold on to this rock, the storm isn't going to blow you away. It's almost comforting just to think about that. That's the kind of rock I'm talking about. Not the kind of rock that sinks you, but the kind of rock that keeps you steady when everything else is chaos. We all get overwhelmed, especially these days. Life isn't easy, and that's a euphemism if I've ever heard one. So what is your rock during life's storms? What do you attach yourself to? What keeps you safe? I'm Chad Lawson, and let's calm it down in three, two, one. 
not every rock is going to look like, well, a rock. <laughs> Maybe this rock, this support, is a source of comfort to a person in your life. For Tom Hanks' character in Castaway, it was the volleyball he named Wilson that he found solace in. Or maybe, as a child, you had a favorite blanket or stuffed animal that always soothed the scaries. Mine was Snoopy, of course. As an adult, whatever that means, one may question my carrying a toy Snoopy on board every flight, but that's another episode. But this idea of having a rock... And life, it it isn't new. I mean, even Paul McCartney sings the lyrics, When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. So a person or a thing or even a place that is a source of support or comfort or just something that makes you feel safe. And while it's a concept we're all pretty familiar with, we're going to take it one step further today. We're going to identify it. What or who is your rock? And when I asked you to visualize that sturdy rock that kept you rooted and safe during the storm, who or what came to mind for you? I've been having this conversation with a few of my friends since the memorial service because I haven't stopped thinking about it. And I've asked them, what's your rock? A lot of people said their rock was another person, maybe a partner or a parent or a lifelong friend, a a pet even, um, someone who's always been there for them, unwavering, unconditional love. It's wonderful if you have someone like that in your life. And if you do treasure it. That's something precious that not everyone is fortunate enough to have. And a few people mentioned religion, their faith, their relationship with God or a deity. It's their rock and their life during hard times. And other people said that their rock was a certain type of activity, be it like a music or a hobby or of some sort or a cause, something that they are very involved in, or for them, One person in particular, it was a certain philosophy, just um, uh, a a creative way to think and kind of have a different perspective on just life. Now, maybe it's not just one thing. Maybe it's a few safety blankets and a few Snoopies, and anything and anyone can serve as a rock for you. And you don't need to have just one rock. You can have as many rocks as 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 you would like. So I'm going to ask you again, what is your rock? Hold it in your mind for just a moment. This is a person or a thing that keeps you connected and grounded no matter what, keeps you safe, a dependable, unwavering support you can always count on during life's most difficult moments. For a moment, Just appreciate whatever it is. If it's your faith, say a prayer of thanks and gratitude. If it's an activity, maybe reflect on how it came to find you. And if it's a person or even a pet, spend some time with them after this to either go on a walk or even just dial and say, hey, I was thinking about you and I just wanted to share something. Now, I want to take this moment to say, if you can't think of anything, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with you if you don't have anything like that in your life. But it doesn't mean that you're doomed or that you're going to be swept away in life's storms. You are okay, rock or not. You are whole and you deserve support. And I don't know if this is true for you or not, but I find that many people who say they don't have a rock in their life are often rocks for other people. Maybe the people around you lean on you for support. Maybe you're the sturdy, unshakable rock. And that's wonderful. And you're so kind and and giving, very giving. But what about even you? Can you think of one thing 
a faith or an animal or a quality that you have that will keep you during hard times? What keeps you from flying away during life's storms? What keeps you attached to the world and to yourself? End times of struggle lead me to my rock. Well, why? You ask. Why is it so important to find a space where you feel comfortable? Why do I have to have this rock? What is it about having a safe space? Why is it so important to find someone that knows just what to say? Or why is it so important to have activities that make you feel just good? Well, simple terms, we all need a safe place. We need that embrace, that shoulder to sob on, or that ear to listen to, or that bird in the forest to sing at the top of its lungs, or the brightest of watercolors to just take our breath when we see it for the first time. You will never know what storm, big or small, that the wind may bring to you, but knowing where to find your anchor, your safe place, your rock, knowing this will hold you right where you belong until the storm passes. I'm going to close this episode a little differently. I want you to close your eyes, and for the next minute or so, I just want you to think about what is your rock. In times of struggle, lead me to my rock. To find more episodes of Calm It Down, hear the musical playlist from today's episode, or simply wanting to know where to send chocolate chip cookies, visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. You'll even find additional resources for emotional support, including our online community and our Facebook page. You're not alone. You are not alone. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer, pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. And now something my attorney wants me to say. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and is not intended to, nor should they serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you, and you should only act upon the advice of such physician. Now, what I'd like to say. I am an extreme empath by nature, but my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or physician. 
I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this and future podcasts in aiding those needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit CometDownPodcast.com. And finally, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of emotional health. I'm Chad Lawson, and until next time, be kind to your mind, and join me next week as we calm it down.